Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Green Zero and I back here once again with another Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath video commentary. We are back on the popular replays tab once again, and we have another game here for you today. So this one is between Lion Cub playing as the Black Hand and Daggy Man also playing as the Black Hand. We also have Cyberstorm observing this game here, and I do believe he uploaded it. Jeez, oh, I should have checked. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure he uploaded it. So it's going to be between Lion Cub, Daggy Man. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the last video I had. Uh, it's got a few mixed responses there, but hey, everyone's entitled to their opinion. But uh, yeah, Jack caking it a little bit there. Kim Masabi's going to hate me saying that. That's his word. Caked it. Let's jump in. All right, um, concentrate on this game. This is the game that matters. So I didn't even check the colors. This is Lion. No, no, it's Daggy Man. Daggy Man is the red black hand on the right hand side here. And uh, going straight for his barracks, drafting his scouts. Now, I'm assuming uh, they knew... Uh, Actually, it might have been random v random. It shows their factions because I'm pretty sure yeah, Cyberstorm uploaded. But I think it was a random v random just uh, from memory there on the replay system. So they don't know what factions they are. Uh, well, they know what factions they are. They don't know what, don't know what factions the other guy is here. And uh, Lion Cub is going to be uh, sending just one. No, he's going for a second engineer by the looks of it. So he has got two engineers out. What's Daggy Man going to do? Yeah, there you go, selling off that. Daggy Man just went one engineer. And did he capture his spike already? Oh, no. He didn't put his ref down and he missed out on the $500. That's, oh, he's not going to be enjoying that, really. Lion Cub, a little bit late to the party, actually. Actually, that's his second engineer. The first engineer is getting a head start at the bottom spike, so that's not too bad. But, uh, unfortunately, by Daggy Man missing out on his $500 bonus there, because obviously you need silos, because at that stage in the game, you still have so much money from your initial 10000 that the $500 won't be able to go anywhere because you need silos. Uh, yeah, uh, no one builds silos except the Steel Talons when they block everything, or if you're blocking uh, Flame Reckoners or some kind of Crush or something like that. But uh, they know their black hand now. Daggy Man did win out in the in the center there. He's got two scouts right through the guts. Let's see if Lion Cub can secure this spiky and give himself a slight advantage. But it uh, looks like Daggy Man's going to be content with taking that structure. Yeah, he's not going to pursue that any further. Of course, he's got really slow scouts. He's actually going to fire at Lion Cub scouts over here, so... Um, they're going to make their way out of there right now. Daggy Man does take the structure on the left-hand side here uh, with Lion Cub's uh, spike there. Let's see if he tries to take that out. He's not actually firing at it. This scouting squad getting cleaned up by Lion Cub doesn't want uh, Daggy Man to see what he's doing. And that's why, because he's got an operation center, upgrades a power plant. Flame Tank is on the move. So that's going to be big trouble for Daggy Man if he doesn't see that coming. Meanwhile, Daggy Man... Oh no, what have we got here? We've got an operation... He built a Black Hand squad. You don't build Black Hand squads, you... You sell, you build operation centers, it's cheaper black hand squads. So, Daggy Man missing the spike and then getting in this expensive black hand squad there. They're like, what, 900 bucks? And if you build an operation center, yeah, it's 1500 initially, but when you sell it, you get 750 back. So it's a $750 black hand squad. He upgrades his power plant. Lion Cub sells his off as well. I'm pretty sure he's just got one flame tank. Uh, to be honest, I cannot see the other one on the radar. It's impossible to see that just that single lone unit on the radar. Daggy Man's going to see it's here, and Daggy Man's got bikes, but Lion Cub's got bikes. And, uh, oh, actually, you can see the new rocket trails there. Yes, CGF has been messing with my game again. Apparently, he gets the rocket trails on 1.02 as well now. So, as you can see there, uh, everything's got the fancy rocket trails. They've just got a bit more smoke uh, to them, a bit more effects. It actually looks pretty good. And, uh, and talking about the smoking effects, instead of this flame tank, can it get the war factory? It's already been hurt quite badly here. I don't think it's going to get the war factory. It's going to get close, though. It even ranks up, but oh, man, that rank up almost allowed it to destroy the war factory with the extra 50-something uh, percent damage. I can't remember. I've got it on a notepad somewhere. And meanwhile, the Reckoner is deployed. Nice deployment there from Daggy Man. Deploys it so close to the buildings that you can't silo block. So Lion Cub's not going to be able to silo block. Just a single Scorpion tank is going to get out of that war factory before it goes down. So that's not going to be enough armor to destroy the Reckoner quick enough. And Daggy Man, I mean, with these Reckoners, you can actually queue up. And oh, Lion Cub's got a second war factory. So he obviously had double war factory um, plans, so that's going to help in places over here. That might just be out of range. Yeah, I think it's going to be. Nails a ref as well. This is paying for itself big time. Bikes coming in now and the flame units here. Like I said, you can actually select the Reckoner and queue up the buildings with the waypoint mode there. And, uh, and he's actually using bikes to destroy scoring tanks. Not the best idea in the world. He's actually going to snare one there. So he's actually trying to uh, work these guys down. The Black Hand Squad concentrating on the armor, which isn't going to be very effective at all. Now targeting harvesters. It looks like Lion Cub has no more aggression over there. It's just a single flame tank. Daggy Man bails out the one of the Black Hand Squads. And the second one comes out as well. There's a lot of Cabals here. They're actually working down the Black Hand Squad. I'm not sure why he didn't try to take the Power Plant as well. That's definitely within range. That's an upgraded Power Plant. And that's all Lion Cub's got, really. He probably should have dropped that. He's going to lose one Black Hand Squad. Actually, no, no, he does get one member of that Black Hand Squad back. And the bikes are still funneling, and he's actually been targeting a lot of Scorpion tanks, and he's worn the numbers down. There's only one remaining here. 
he probably should work on those bikes there. Line Cub could have microed a little bit better with the scoring tanks around the War Factory, but it looks like Daily Man's not going to have enough bikes now to finish that off there. And those new those new rocket trails look pretty good. Remember, you can download the. And I know I'm giving C Jeff a bit of publicity here, but yeah, about the 1.03. But yeah, he's got lots of bits and pieces that working with 1.02, like the skin packs and all that kind of stuff. If you want the special edition skins. There's also a silent login which launches you straight from desktop to online play instead of having to go through uh, the menu screens there, which is pretty handy. That Harvester, I'm not sure what he's doing. He's doing 360s here. I'm not sure if Lion Cub's ordered that there for repairs. I think he hasn't. It's just it's just flipping out. There you go. He's going to fix that immediately. But more bikes coming in now. And Daddy Man, he's got an elite bike here, and he's actually destroying these uh, Scorpion tanks. More Scorpion tanks going down. Daddy Man. Uh, he's still got the Reckoner there as well. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to flame down that power plant. That really would have hurt Line Cup. And is Daggy Man just going to flat out win here? He nails a harvester. He's got so many bikes in here. He can nail the rest of the harvesters now. And uh, starting to draft rockets, which is really the only way he's going to be able to counter this now. He spent a lot of money on scoring. He takes another harvester, goes down, selling off the refinery here. He's got infantry squads fighting uh, these guys here. But there's Black Hand there now. And the Cabals are wearing them down. They do kill the Black Hand squad. So the Reckoner is now empty. And he's going to start shooting that. That's just going to provide a target. And Lion Cut's going to lose another Harvester up here. Maybe not. No, I'm pretty sure he's going to lose it. Daggy Man's going to want to commit. And, oh, he doesn't quite finish it off. He's going to have to come back. He's going to have to come back. And, I mean, he really needs to get that. Is he going to pay for it with his bikes? He's going to pay for it with his bikes. But he gets it. And Lion Cub has no Harvesters remaining now. Meanwhile, we've got a battle marker over here. And Lion Cub's uh, Black Hand Squad has made it across it. Level Daggy Man Spike. And can he get the War Factory? Oh, this would bring things right back into bear here. Maybe for Lion Cub, a chance at coming back in this game. He gets the War Factory. Uh, Daggy Man is stuck with just a couple of bikes here now. He can't do much against the uh, infantry at, his, at uh, Lion Cub's base. And he gets an elite Black Hand Squad. And now he's going to get this power plant. Oh, that's going to be crippling for him. He's got no power, he's got no structures, and he's really hurt. He could just use one of his harvesters to crush the Black Hand Squad. Now it's going to go for the refinery, and he blocks it off. Is he going to sell that and get the Cabals, although they will be flying down immediately? He gets a heroic Black Hand Squad. This is going to be crazy. Daggy Man, he can't do really anything at the moment. His bikes are stuck at home. Shredder Tire comes up, and uh, even against Black Hand Squad's elite ones, it's still going to take quite a number of volleys to wear these guys down. They're even selling a, a power plant off here. And is he going to get... Oh, he gets a heroic Black Hand squad. Oh, man, that will be devastating. But, of course, the squad's almost dead. And he takes it down. Now, the refinery almost goes down. If that refinery went down, that could have been game. Because Daggy Man has no income. He, if he didn't have $3,000, he'd be dead. I mean, he could sell the power plant. But he's only going to, what, 250 bucks for that? Lion Cub, what have you been doing in the meanwhile? He has sold his MCV. All right, he sold his MCV. I'm not sure where he sent the engineer. Because the MCV is definitely gone. It may have gone down the guts. There's those four bikes. No, there's the engineer. Where... <laughs> Oh, he's going to be immediately killed. I would have gone for the bottom spikes, but he's obviously just trying to run forward to get a uh, get the enemy MCV or, or a little bit of luck there. But Daggy Man's a little bit ahead because he still has his MCV and he has just as much harvesters as uh, what Lion Cub does. Oh, Lion Cub has an extra harvester now, and Lion Cub has two spikes to Daggy Man's zero spikes. And these infantry, I mean, these these bikes shouldn't get a kill really. I mean, I, they have done a nice job to sneak around there. And uh, like I said, they really shouldn't be able to get a kill here because Lion Cub's got a lot of infantry. He needs to mark a bit better. He's running over the uh, Tiberium there, but he does get the Harvester back to repair. And he could actually dock it and score repairs at the same time. Which is why you place your warp factory close to your refinery. Here we go. And there, he's even going to demonstrate for us. There you go. He's docking Tiberium and he's capping repairs there with the little welder bots that fly around. And now he's going for his own bikes. But yeah, um, Daggy Man, like I said before, he, could, he probably could have leveled that power plant because uh, <laughs> Lion Cub would be in all sorts of trouble. You have to build two of those to make up for the, just one of them, or maybe even more than that. But uh, that would have been uh, problematic for him. Daggy Man, I think he could have, yeah, he could have done a little bit more damage with his attack there, but it was still so devastating. He's got to be happy with that. He's, he just just about won the game there. And that's, that Black Hand Squad basically allowed Lion Cub to somewhat recover here. He, I mean, he's not fully recovered. He's got three harvesters. He can't build any more harvesters because that'll be too many for this ratio. Two and one is uh, fine if you're rushing and stuff like that. Scorpion takes down here, attacking the spike there. Meanwhile, it's bikes versus bikes over here, and I've completely lost my train of thought on that. And what are they going to be taking? They're not going to be able to get a harvester, that's for sure. So they're going for enemy bikes, and they don't even manage to snare that one. Yes, they do. They snare it now, but these bikes are all going to be cleaned up. Oh, wait, there's one more. And there we go, going down now. So those new rocket trails, they actually look... I, I like the new rocket trails. They look pretty good. All right, you got to admit, they look pretty good. And Daggy Man did invest in those two Scorpion tanks to take out this spike. And uh, he's not actually firing on this spike over here. So Lion Cub, like I said, you don't want four harvesters on one rep. You're always going to have harvesters lining up. Even three in one, there's usually going to be one one lining up at least uh, uh, for a few seconds uh, 
during the docking there, and we can see that now. Meanwhile, Lion Cubs, uh, he's back on the offensive. He knows Daggy Man. Daggy Man's got the same economy. Daggy Man's basically got everything the same, so he doesn't have an upgraded power plant. And uh, he's got his MCV. And he's starting to try to destroy those spikes. So Lion Cub's not going to have that 20 credit a second, which he's just getting basically while uh, Daggy Man's uh, not getting anything here. The Harvester is not bugged out. It's actually just waiting for the other Harvester to come in. And will Lion Cub be able to score a kill? This would be pretty big because that time... Oh, he gets, the, he gets the Harvester. That was full of Tiberium as well. That was a nice kill there for Lion Cub. I think he should get out of here because there's some infantry. Actually, no, he's going to go back and re-engage now. He might be able to score another one. Oh, no, he switches targets. Daggy Man tried to pull his harvesters back, but they all ended up stopping. Can he score a kill? He does get another kill. Nice work there from Lion Cub. And this game is getting very messy for both players. You can see they're both scrounging for resources and kills now. And, uh, yeah, like I said, very messy. The engagements are fast. They're uh, sporadic, and uh, there's a lot of damage being done from both sides in terms of units being lost as well as economic damage and harvests going down. We're already like, what, almost to the 10 minute mark in this game and Daggy Man's got four buildings. Yeah, Lion Cub's got three. This is crazy. We should be moving into the probably the late mid game at the moment, but these guys are just are still on their main fields, haven't even expanded. There's no tech in sight. Um, well, of course, Lion Cub does hold this power plant, which is technically a tier two structure. And uh, they did open with tier 2, but uh, no one's got any other kind of tier 2 tech aside from Lion Cubs. One power plant, but that's not a very fearsome power plant there. Uh, it'd be cool if they actually exploded and did a lot of damage to stuff around them. Because Liquid Tiberium is very, very dangerous. And that's why Nod uses it, because they're terrorists. Uh, that's what I've always thought the Nod, Nod faction has been terrorists. Yes, as a, as a strong GDI player, never liked Nod. In the lore anyway, the story and stuff like that. But uh, let's concentrate on the game again because Daggy Man is now once again on the defensive and he has been for a while now. Lion Cub, nice work to turn it around here. Can he score another Harvester kill? He's going to go straight for it and that Harvester was already damaged so he should be able to trade a couple of bikes of that Harvester and he should be able to get out of there. No, he tries to go across the face of the Tiberian field and that's going to cost him almost every single one of his bikes. Only one bike is going to escape here. Daggy Man has Scorp tanks but he's down to just a single Harvester. And uh, he has destroyed both the spikes of Lion Cub, though. And Lion Cub finally has an MCV. I think he realizes that the Tiberium is almost gone here. So this one War Factory play, it's not going to last forever. He's actually deploying. I'm not sure. He's obviously going for another structure. There's no point building another ref because, like I said, he's almost clean as Tiberium. Daggy Man's not so desperate to expand. I mean, he's only got two harvesters. They're going to take quite a long time to clean that up there. But uh, let's see what Daggy Man's doing. He does have some units moving across the middle of the map. It's only four Scorpion tanks. And I'd imagine... That Lion Cub should be able to defend. Yeah, he's got rockets and they're all spread out. He's building his own scoring tanks and he's on the move. So that's why he, he uh, deployed. He wanted to get down a uh, barracks to get the rockets out, which are being milked a little bit by this Cabal Squad here. Lion Cub should really do something about that. That's not good. Uh, he's sending the Cabal Squad up there and uh, the Cabal Squad is ranking up, but now it's going to be completely annihilated there by the units coming out of the barracks. You've got to watch out for the ball, though, on the hand of Nod. It will it will crush your infantry, so don't run near, near nearby it when you uh, sell it. Uh, I've seen people lose a few engineers to that. Oh, what's happening down here? We have a battle marker. No, it's just a single bike from Daggy Man. Uh, picking away at this MCV. Yeah, he's not even going to run for it. And uh, selling off the Shredder turret there to get the Cabal Squad. As, as for scouting in this game, since both sides have been in, in each other's base for so, so long, I mean, or so much of the game, I guess scouting isn't really imperative. They know there's no tech. They can see exactly what they have at each other's base. And Daggy Man went for a second refinery. That's expensive. He might not have needed that, but remember, he scores a harvester out. He's got four harvesters out, so he's got four and two, but uh, he's in that position Lion Cub was in about a minute ago, and this Tiberium is going to be uh, quickly exhausted. There's only a small amount of crystal there. He, he should have started moving by now, I feel, but uh, he is not moving. His MCB is not doing anything. He's probably low on power because he's only got one power plant. Not power plants don't give off a lot of power unless they're upgraded, and Lion Cub's still sitting pretty with his Tib Fusion in core, liquid Tiberium core. Oh yeah, and uh, we have our Lion Cub now transferring his harvesters over. He's transferred pretty much all of them except for one that he's left there. Now remember, they're black cans, so if they want to go for the blue field, it's going to be quite dangerous for those harvesters to venture out without escorts because they are not stealth. Nod can easily snipe away some of that tip. Uh, hot tip, if, you got, if you're against a Nod faction and you have scouting eyes on the field, you can actually ch constantly check it, see if there's crystal disappearing. If there's crystal disappearing in front of your eyes, something's obviously harvesting it. And if you uh, have a look over and there's just a big chunk missing here, obviously something's been there in the past and you really should stop that. Um, I'd, I'd advise getting blue tip really early in the game because pulling a harvester off the line uh, really early doesn't seem to benefit it. Because remember, the harvester has to drive here, then it has to turn around and drive back, 
and at that point in the game you really need Tiberium as fast as possible not just that huge load so wait until you, your main field's almost dry then send one harvester there or you could always MCV's gonna get caught out or you could wait till your main field's dry and send all but at least three or four of your harvesters here and one to your expansion so you can just get a massive load of tib in that's probably the best way to do it wait till you exhaust your main field and then send most of your harvesters here. Of course, you're going to have to send escorts because if the enemy sees that, they're just going to be like, oh, cha-ching. And uh, the Daggy Man's MCV takes a fair bit of pain there as well. And meanwhile, Lion Cub's going to lose a few tanks over here. That's not good at all. I'm not sure how many were there. I can see two husks going down there. Probably not too bad for Lion Cub. Doesn't mind expanding that. He's recalling the bikes, though. Obviously, he sees his harvesters here, but he gets a little bit too close to those Scorp tanks. Trying to go around now. And as you can see there, you that rocket trail. I guess that's one thing CGF's done right. That looks pretty sweet. I mean, I know he's played with it a lot in 1.03, and it never used to look that good, but that's really clean and neat. And, uh, of course, uh, in one in actual 1.02, they don't really have any trail at all. It's just a line. And, uh, I don't know, I guess that, guess that was EA's decision here, but it looks like Lion Cub's going to be forced to defend here. Daggy Man, actually, where do you pull all these forces from? He's got bikes, he's got some Cabal squads, he's got some Scorbing tanks. It's a very small, but it's going to be a very technical engagement, but, yeah, Lion Cub's going to be able to push that back. He's got a war factory there, and he's force firing the ground there, obviously control group. Uh, control obviously is uh, force fire by default, so a lot of people can accidentally force fire the ground when they're control grouping up. This is a problem for Lion Cub though, all oh, Daggerman doesn't have a ref here, so maybe not just yet, but when those harvesters get back to base, they are loaded with blue Tiberium, and that's going to be so much, that's like an army just driving across the map here, like imagine how many scorpion tanks you can get out of that. What is it, uh, I should have looked up, is it 2800? For blue tib, one load is at 2,800. Someone's probably in the in the tabs, in the going to be in the comments going, no, it's not that. Look, I honestly don't know. I just know it's it's tons and tons of Tiberium. We got some bikes uh, moving around up here, so uh, that's quite enough. It's like four or five Scorp tanks there, four eights of 32. Yeah, maybe three and a half or four Scorp tanks each. So you can build like a dozen tanks with that load. And oh man, he's going to lose one, and it's got blue Tiberium in it. Oh man, that's going to hurt. He does save the other two. And they will, uh, they, or, or did he save the other two? I'm not sure, actually, sure, did he score two kills there or one kill? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, bad green zero. I was uh, trying to concentrate on how much blue Tiberium is worth. And now he's got a refinery here. Line Cub, great. Oh, he's actually got tier two. He's going for Dozer Blades. He's got a strong economy down here, but Daggy Man's going to be able to continue in this game with uh, equal numbers because this blue field, like I said, this game has been going for so long now. Normally it would be in the late game or the mid late game of any other match, but here we're only in, we're only just in the mid game now, and uh, he needs to make an attack here, which he's going to. He's got Scorpion tanks, but as you can see, while he's firing on these harvesters, Daggy Man is free to pick off his tanks, and Lion Cub actually has more tanks, I think. Actually, it's going to be pretty close. A bike's coming in here from Daggy Man. He needs to get these harvesters back to work. He obviously really doesn't want to lose them, and they could actually uh, dock and harvest this tip while this fight's going on. But Lion Cub's going to switch targets. He may be able to take that one out. Daggy Man's trying to pull it behind the refinery, and can he save it? No, he just can't save it. But Lion Cub is paid big time because while all his tanks are shooting that harvester, he's losing all of his tanks and he's not destroying any Daggy Man. So Daggy Man's firepower is getting stronger and stronger. Can he take out one more harvester? Not paying attention there. He switched targets, and now he's got two very badly damaged harvesters instead of a harvester kill there. So Daggy Man needs to be a little bit careful. The Lion Cub has expanded, by the way. I saw his ref go up. No, his ref go up. There's MCV go up there. Daggy Man doesn't have Dozer Blades, though, and it looks like Lion Cub does. Now, he did have a structure queued. I'm not sure what it was. We have a battle marker. No, that's just infantry. Yeah, Lion Cub is dropping an expansion down here, so that's really bad for Daggy Man. He needs to he needs to start thinking about getting this field soon because, I mean, there's still a lot of blue there, and he's actually trying to transition inventory. This could be a good idea because he's not going to win the Scorp Tank fight. He's got a decent number, like it's a small squadron of Scorp Tanks here, but he doesn't have Dozer Blades, and he doesn't have his Tier 2. So he's going to go for the infantry upgrade and snare some infantry. He's got some bikes rolling around the back here, but they're not going to be able to do much. There's nothing there to snipe. There's a lot of Scorpion tanks here now from Lion Cub. He's just working off one War Factory, so he's spending all of his money on this expansion now. And uh, he's, he's really concerned about getting that. He's, he's basically like, hey, if I get that expansion up, should be able to starve out Daggy Man. Daggy Man's still pulling in a ton of blue tib, and this is really going to be fueling him. He has his infantry upgrade. He hasn't actually built any infantry yet, though. And now he's forming up. He's got a nice line formation, and he should be able to pick off the front tanks very easily here. He is at a deficit in terms of armor, but he has the numerical superiority. Oh, that harvester immediately sniped because it was heavily damaged. And Lion Cub's just going to poke his head through, but he's being blocked. Nice move there from Daggy Man, and he's going to be able to destroy all of Lion Cub's Scorpion tanks very cost effectively. But will he get the harvester? The harvester briefly stops, and he may get the harvester. That last tank does score the harvester kill, but Lion Cub, that was terribly cost inefficient. Yes, he got all the harvesters, which is probably what made it worth it, because Daggy Man doesn't have any harvesters here at all. But he lost so many tanks. He lost 
I mean, Daggy Man lost what, like one or two tanks to Lion Cub's like 10 then. So Lion Cub really sacked a lot of tanks to get those harvesters. W was it worth it? It's one of those calls that people are like, oh no, that was a mistake, uh, depending on the outcome of this game. But if, if Lion Cub wins, then it wasn't a mistake. But if Lion Cub doesn't win, that would be counted as a mistake. That's why people have a big cry on the forums here. And there is a big engagement couple with a medium sized engagement. All right, it's starting to become a small engagement because they're wearing each other down here now. And it looks like Lion Cub, just with the economy in the center there, is gonna be able to reinforce himself here. And Daggy Man, uh, he's not looking too good. He has actually moved his MCU to the middle field. I'm not sure why he would do that, honestly. He's got that field in the bottom right. It's very far away from Lion Cub. It's fully grown. And uh, Lion Cub, of course, isn't there. He's gonna be basically safe through uh, distance there. And he does snipe a harvest and nice work, but he may have to pull back here. Lion Cub does have his infantry upgrade as well. And he is forcing these guys back here. But like I said, yeah, Daggy Man has realized it now. He realized he can't go there. He shouldn't have gone there in the first place, to be honest, because really, if you go to the blue field first, you can go back to this field. He's already rallied harvesters there. They're obviously not uh, ty refining Tiberium because he couldn't see the field when he gave the order. But uh, yeah, and I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> but yeah, Lion Cub's a little bit scattered. He needs to regroup. He's got great economy down there. Is he going for tech? Not quite sure. Doesn't get laser capacitors because he's black hand. But Daggy Man's pulling in more blue tib now. And uh, it's taken his sweet time to clear away that blue Tiberium. Still hasn't cleaned it all up. So he's at a massive economic disadvantage at the moment because Lion Cub, I have to imagine, has harvested much more Tiberium. Even though Daggy Man's got blue tip, he's really had to fight for it. He lost most of his tank army. There's a handful of tanks remaining. Uh, what's he got up there? Not much. Still trying to pump out Scorpion tanks. It's going to be Scorpion tanks infantry. Normally it's just all out Scorpion tanks, but as you can see, they just can't afford that kind of production and they both decided to switch to some infantry. So they're mixing tanks and infantry. Now Lion Cub does have a tech lab. So what's he going to be doing with that? I mean, he, he knows he's secured this field. He's just going to consolidate. That is a good idea, I, I'd imagine. I mean, if he knew how bad a shape Daggy Man was in, Daggy Man is in a really bad shape. He has no refineries down here. He's just about to place one, and he better make sure he catches that harvester. Yeah, nice work there, pulling the harvester back to the very close ref. Still mining this Tiberium here. What's happening up there? A few Scorpion tanks coming in. They should be able to take out these enemy Scorpion tanks because they have numerical superiority, and they're actually going to be able to nail a harvester if Daggy Man focuses. He gets one of the Scorpion tanks, and he should be able to score that harvest to kill. Yes, he does, and he gets the other Scorpion tank, and he's going to pull out. That was a little bit um, a bitsy there, again, because he didn't quite target everything down one at a time. He kind of split, but he will get out of there with a couple of his tanks, and uh, that wasn't too bad at all. Snipes down a uh, harvester, but there is a Redeemer coming out, so Lion Cub just uh, bringing out the Siege Breakers here, which is what I've been calling them for some reason now. Artillery, Siege Breakers. Epic Units, Siege Breakers. And uh, he doesn't really need those, to be honest, because he's got numerical superiority. He's got economic superiority now. And uh, by doing this, he's allowing Daggy Man time to recover. Daggy Man's actually selling up all over here, and he's sending his cabals over here. But Lion Cup, I imagine, would have the charge. No, he doesn't have charge Particle Beam. Oh, yes, he does. He just finished it then, I was going to say. Or oh, well, maybe I had a black hand from uh, Daggy Man's like there. But he's not going to beat those guys. And as you can see, Lion Cup's not even going to need his redeeming, he may flat out win the game here, so that was a very bitsy and messy game, but great effort by both players with the pressure they are under, and I can see why this made the popular replays tab. Yeah, there were some engagements there which were a little bit puzzling to the viewers, but as I explained, uh, there were reasoning behind them, and uh, like I said, it looks like uh, Lion Cub's going to stream in here with all his units, Daggy Man has sold up all over there, and uh, now he's chasing these harvesters away. I'm not sure what Daggy Man's going to do. He should still be commentating this game. He's trying to pump out some infantry. He's trying to draft. He really is fighting right to the end here. If he can clean up these Scorpion tanks, he might have a little bit of time before the Redeemer gets here, because I don't think it's out yet. I don't really want to turn away. Uh, it might already be out. I do have the sound disabled, so it doesn't re-echo in my mic here. I should be wearing headphones, yeah, but it's like 35 degrees here. Uh, well, not in my room, but outside, and I don't have the air conditioner on yet, because electricity is expensive. And it uh, looks like Lion Cub is actually going to completely overrun uh, Daggy Man here, so the power build is going to be uh, not of his concern. <laughs> He's lost all of his harvesters. There you go, Daggy Man goes down. That was a great game. And like I said before about those about mistakes and stuff, and people say this on the forum, it's only apparent after the engagement whether or not something was a good idea or not, except in the circumstance where Lion Cub lost all those tanks to get those harvesters. That really hurt Daggy Man, but you don't really see that until the game's ended. How did it affect Lion Cub? You know, what it, it might have seemed like a good idea at the time, and then it might have been a good idea later on, or it might have been like a good, seemed like a good idea at the time and been really bad. And people, that's why they say, "Oh, that was a mistake." That wasn't a mistake. At that point in time, you thought it was a good idea to engage, so you engaged. You know, you got to learn from that. You know, you can't just jump up and down and say, "That's why I lost." You know, you because I uh, I'd made a mistake. You know. Uh, I mean, was it a, a mistake or a forced error? I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but I mean. 
like I said, in, in some fights where I lose, I think, oh yeah, this is a good a good time to attack, and I go on an attack and I get slammed, and I'm like, oh man, I, I totally didn't expect that to happen, and then I can just sit around and blame the whole loss on that attack. I'm like, you can't do that, you know, you chose to go in there, that was your your call, your order, and it turned out to be a bad one. You can't just hinge on the fact that uh, that's the only reason why the other player won the game and make them feel bad about it, because that was bad, 23 minutes and 33 seconds. Oh man, I've, I've raged out a little bit here, haven't I, but only in myself. Uh, we got Lion Cub with $145,462, and Daggy Man got $100,776. So Lion Cub got about $44,000 more, almost $45,000 more, uh, $44,800 and something or other, I'm just guessing. So $45,000 more is uh, quite substantial in a 23 minute game. Obviously, most of that, I imagine, come right at the end. You look at this bit here, at about the 18 minute mark, Lion Cub really started steaming away when once he got the middle field going that's where he really took off and daggy man you can see you see the blue tip here it's just bumping him up here at the 12 minute mark then it bumps him up again and again but he can't maintain this steady stream there's periods where he's not being able to produce anything because he hasn't got the money and a lot of blue tip coming in there a lot of blue tip coming in there and then try to get his economy established over there but as you can see line cup actually ahead that's interesting daggy man really didn't follow anything up he just kept going bikes after the reckoner I think he could have hurt Lion Cub a little bit more, but he had to be happy with what he did. He just about knocked Lion Cub straight out of the game there. But uh, Lion Cub always ahead, obviously got that green field up down the bottom. Daggy Man, uh, if he hadn't wasted time going to the center field, because he wasted about a minute moving his MCV there, deploying it, and then realizing he couldn't stay there, he could have moved away, had his double ref down, and defended out that Scorpion attack at least. He could have at least defended the Scorpion attack, and then maybe uh, had some time before the Redeemer rocked up here. So structures up and down, pretty even actually, that's that's quite good. Uh, units up and down, obviously they both rush, they have a lot of units. You can see this, this graph is just up and down, up and down, up and down. So many engagements, we never saw a really large engagement, we only saw very small to medium engagements here because uh, if they had units, they wanted to go kill something. And of course, uh, when their skill collides with each other, something's got to give. And uh, I mean, these two players are pretty evenly matched, I'd imagine. Uh, judging by my experience here, uh, obviously Lion Cub there surged ahead, but this is infantry. Remember, he defended with infantry here. That's why he's got a lot more Daggy Man was down to vehicles. Lost his War Factory too to that Black Hand Squad. Nice work there from Lion Cub. Obviously, Lion Cub plummeted a bit there. Obviously, expended some bikes and some infantry. Daggy Man got back on top, and he was getting Blue Tiberium around here, but Lion Cub, as you can see, just scored ahead. He had more Scorb tanks. He didn't use them as cost effectively because he was trying to get Daggy Man's uh, uh, harvesters. And if we look at the resource graph, that was working. He just destroyed so much of Daggy Man's harvesters there. So both sides made some calls, uh, some of them were good, uh, obviously at the time they thought they were all good, but uh, yeah, Daggy Man probably should have gone for the backfield a little bit uh, sooner, and uh, those uh, first engagements, you know, weren't perfect, but were really good from both players, that was really nice, they have to be happy with their performance there, I mean even Daggy Man, that was a really good game I thought, and I can see why it's on the popular replays tab here, but the resource deficit at the end here, you can see most of that was obviously brought out within the last 5 minutes of the game, even here where Daggy Man was starting to lose his edge, he still could have held tight because I'd imagine his kill death ratio, no it was worse actually, but uh, probably because he lost a lot of his infantry at the end there. He created more units as well, obviously went for infantry a little bit sooner than Lion Cub. He lost more, let's see where, structure's pretty even as well, Daggy Man 70 to Lion Cub 65, they both lost about the same as well and they both sold about, this is a very even game. Everything here is really, really close. Except for the money count here, I can't understand. I mean, Daggy Man must have gone for more infantry, but it, it isn't apparent here. That was uh, really interesting. So aside from the money, and then at the end where Lion Cub kind of steam, I didn't really steamroll him. And I've been talking for a while, I do apologize. I know people don't uh, watch the stats much, but I have a lot to say about this game. I really like this game. And uh, that was a good effort from Daggy Man and Lion Cub. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this VOD, and I'll see you all next time.